Greetings and welcome to this comprehensive course on level design, lighting and animation inside the Unity engine aimed at intermediate users. This course is presented by Pact Publishing and my name is Alan Thorne and I'll be your instructor. So before we go any further on this course, I want to introduce myself, say a little bit about me, who I am and what I'm doing on this course. So my name is Alan Thorne and I'll be your instructor. I have been a games developer for the past 17 years of my life and wow, what a great 17 years these have been. In this time I've worked on many different games for many different companies and not just games as well, I've worked on interactive simulators and other kinds of kiosk attractions but all of them using game development technologies. In addition to that, I've also founded my own game studio, Wax Lyrical Games, and we created the first person point and click adventure game called Baron Wittard Nemesis of Ragnarok. And this really reflects one of my passions within games. Sure, I love pretty much any kind of game out there, but one of my passions, one of the types of games that's closest to my heart is the point and click adventure game. And Baron Wittard is really representative of that passion. In addition to this, I've written 23 books on games development and pretty much all of these books are focused on different games development tools, but they all have the aim of teaching games development. So some of those books look at Unity, some at Unreal, some at Blender, and pretty much it surveys the many fantastic tools that are on offer today for creating games. In addition to those books, I've also presented over 15 video training courses, much like the one that you are taking now. And this I really love to do because I get to show in an interactive kind of way the ways in which you can use many different games development tools to create fantastic games. Now, in addition to this, I've also been a lecturer at many universities and colleges, including Teesside University and London South Bank University. And I am currently the head of the Games Design and Development Master's course at the National Film and Television School in Northwest London. And then finally, well, what do I love? Well, I love history, games, philosophy, and in fact, I love pretty much most things. I'm interested in nearly everything. So that's really a little bit about who I am and who is presenting this course. I think it's time to move on and for us to get started. I look forward to working with you on this course. Welcome to section one of this course. In section one, we're going to be taking a look at materials and lighting. The materials part is about how do we control the appearance of surfaces within the level. How can we make walls look like they're made from real world materials like brick or concrete? How can we control the reflectivity of objects? How reflective are they? And how can we control how bumpy objects are as opposed to creating smooth surfaces? All of these details are controlled by materials and we're going to be using materials to take a look at that. We're also going to take a look at lighting. How can we add lights to a scene to make them look more interesting? These two concepts are going to be covered in this section. In section two of this course, we're going to cover the two distinct topics of modular building and level design. Modular building covers how we can import a range of different mesh assets that have been built specifically to act as tileable pieces that we can connect together with each other and reuse and recycle throughout a level to construct more elaborate environments. And then we're also going to take a look at level design, that is some ideas and concepts that we can use as well as tools within Unity for putting together believable 3D worlds. In this section, we're going to be working with terrains and creating exterior environments for our level. Specifically, we're going to look at terrain sculpting. That is, how the different tools we can use in Unity will allow us to bring together a complete exterior environment. So we're going to be able to carve out mountains, canyons, hills, valleys, lots of different kind of things like that. We're also going to look at terrain texturing, that is how can we make our terrains look like they're made from real world materials, how can we make our terrains look like they contain grass, rocks, swamps, water, and all that kind of interesting stuff. So let's get started. In this section we're going to take a look at lighting and light mapping. 
These are the different ways in which we can add lighting to the scene, control lighting levels and control how lighting is calculated. We'll also take a look at real time versus baked lights and what the difference is between them. How can we control how lights behave during gameplay compared to what are the things that we can do in advance of gameplay to make the lighting look fantastic. So we'll take a look at real time versus baked lights. You really don't want to miss this section because once you get a handle on the lighting tools, your scenes can look spectacular. In section five, we're going to focus on building a sample project and consolidating our ideas. That is, we're going to take all of the stuff that we've seen so far, both practical and theoretical stuff, and we're going to apply that in the creation of a single consolidated project. In this section, we're going to take a look at creating day and night cycles and how we can change the lighting conditions of the scene that we created in the previous section. So we're going to take that exterior environment terrain scene and apply to that a day and night cycle and take a look at the impact of what happens to that scene when the lighting conditions change. In this section we're going to enter the world of animation and in particular we're going to be looking at how we can animate rigid bodies and props. So stay tuned for this section because in completing this you're going to know how to animate a lot of stuff. In this section, we're going to continue our exploration of animation. And particularly, we're going to look at how we can create animated characters. That is, how we can import rigged characters and redeploy different animations onto those characters. So we're going to look at clever ways in which we can even recycle animations from one character and redeploy that onto another character. So there is a lot to get through in this course. Now let's get started.